Jobs has been canceled. Fox News has canceled him. Mm, cancel culture over at Fox News, sad. Now, uh, why? Why did Fox cancel him? He happened to have uh, one of the highest rated shows on Fox Business. And uh, according to CNN, although Fox isn't saying, the timing of Dobbs' cancellation Friday appears to be no coincidence. It took place 24 hours after Dobbs and Fox were named in a $2.7 billion defamation lawsuit filed by voting technology company Smartmatic. Uh, there's also the fact that with Trump no longer in office, Lou Dobbs's ratings aren't gonna do as well because his ratings really relied on uh, kowtowing to Trump, licking his boots. Sources at Fox indicated that the Smartmatic lawsuit was just one factor in the decision to cancel Dobbs's show. His weak performance with advertisers was also a significant factor, one source said. Dobbs was one of Trump's most vocal on-air supporters, which kept his show's ratings high. And we have some fun video to get to, to um, you know, just give you an example of the nonsense and shenanigans he engaged in um, during the Trump's uh, during Trump's administration. Uh, but Jenk, any thoughts before we go to those videos? Yes. Uh, so let me explain how the behind the scenes stuff works here. Um, so number one, um, did the lawsuit uh, cause this? A hundred percent. Yes. Um, so this is. Uh, First of all, what a lot of corporations do, just throw the biggest, one of the bigger names under the bus. So it makes it seem like you've done something significant. When in reality, you'd authorize it all along. If they actually wanted to take action, they could have pulled Lou Dobbs in the middle of his lying, not at the end of his lying. They could have made a difference before January 20th, when what Lou Dobbs was saying was super dangerous and was affecting the outcome. But they chose not to do that. They chose to keep him on air to lie that entire time and then only pull him after the lawsuit is filed. So, and by the way, not only is this a well known Rupert Murdoch strategy, he did this in the UK as well, but it's literally in the HBO series Succession. They talk about it because it's based on the Murdochs. And they have lots of strategy discussions about who to throw under the bus and whether that, whether it's a big enough fish for the media to go away and say it's good enough. Like they, that's, that a scalp was taken and they could move on. So that's how this game is played. Now, the other important part is what Anna mentioned in the middle there. Uh, Lou Dobbs actually lost a ton of advertisers because they advertisers now uh, find him to be brand unsafe. Because they don't want to have their brands on a program where a guy is a, apparently a lunatic, um, raving lunatic conspiracy theories that are hurting the country. So now you, you have to understand why they kept him on the air that long if he'd already lost his advertisers. So if you have high ratings, it doesn't matter at all if you don't have advertisers. The whole point of high ratings is to get you more money from advertisers. But the reason they kept them on the air is because Fox News and Fox Business make most of their money not from advertising, but from your cable subscriber fees. So they need a lot of audience so they could tell the cable providers, you need to carry Fox Business, you need to carry Fox News. So I'm gonna charge you a ton of money for that. And, and that's how they make the lion's share of their money. That's why they play this game nonstop where they say outrageous things to get audience. So they could build up their revenue through subscriptions basically. And then cut a couple of prominent people loose because they're getting hurt by advertisers and now lawsuits. So that's the needle that they're threading from a business perspective. Now, uh, with Luke Dobbs gone, um, I think it only makes sense to, uh, you know, just reflect on his legacy. And I want to do that uh, chronologically. So many people don't know this, but uh, back in 2007, uh, my role at TYT was not in any way similar to the role that I have now. I was the guest booker, and um, I'm very proud to report that one of the big names that I got on the show was Lou Dobbs, who got into a pretty feisty debate with Jenk. Um, and so I have a snippet of it to share with you guys. This is from November 9th, 2007. Let's take a look. Yeah, on facts, there are many things that we can certainly argue yeah. about. For example, on your show, uh, you said that a third of the people that are in jails are illegal aliens, but it turns out it's only 6%. Have no, you corrected not, that? No, that's not true. That is absolutely not true. Nearly uh, nearly 30% nearly thirty of those people 
in our federal prisons, okay, are uh, of uh, not according to the Justice Department. Uh, yes, according to the Justice no, Department. No, I've got. I'm, I'm looking at the numbers right now. Listen, how can you reform immigration law if you can't control immigration? How can you control immigration if you don't control your? You do a comprehensive piece of legislation that recognizes the people that are here, that recognizes the future problem, that recognizes controlling borders. You take all that into account. I have no problems with that. Absolutely. Need you out in thirty seconds. All right. Uh, the book is Independence Day. And uh, one last question for you, real quick, in 30 sure. seconds or less. No. Christopher Columbus, do you celebrate Christopher Columbus Day? Because he was an illegal alien, right? Didn't ask for permission to come. Uh, actually, I don't like, uh, I, I frankly am no fan of uh, St. Patrick's Day, Columbus Day, or any other uh, celebration of, uh, of uh, heritage. What a liar. I mean, that last part is hilarious. But the woman that you heard in the audio uh, was his publicist who did not appreciate the tone of the interview because Jake was asking him some pretty tough questions and he did not like that, neither did she. To be fair to Lou Dobbs, he actually stayed on, right? But the publicist coming on to a live radio interview at the time. Now we were also online, but we were on Air America. We we're going to a lot of people at the time, right? So now we go to more people, but they don't know that. Anyways, so back then for her to jump on in the middle of live radio and go, yeah, 30 <laughs> seconds. No, no, don't ask that question. No. <laughs> That's insane. It's I've never seen that before. But it's shocking <laughs> that Lou Dobbs publicist would be as crazy as Lou Dobbs, or actually crazier in that case. Um, for yeah. the members, I want to save another hilarious Lou Dobbs story I have from an interaction that I had back in the 1990s. Okay, so we'll do that in the post game today. That's just for members, tyt.com slash join. Or if you're watching on YouTube, you can just hit the join button below at the essentials level, you get all the post games. Now let's take a look at some of Lou Dobbs's greatest hits during the Trump administration, where he continued to not only suck up to Trump, but push all sorts of conspiracy theories. Pastor Robert Jeffers always talks about this president. God sent this president. He is uh, he is a person of providence, and I'll tell you, the evidence is accumulating mightily to support the pastor's view. And He's already set a standard, Congressman. For presidents that most mortals won't be able to meet, he outworks them, he outthinks, he is remarkably resourceful, he's bright, his judgment is second to none. He's not perfect, nobody's perfect, but he's done a really good job. Well, he's pretty close promises. to perfect, Sean. Pretty I mean, close. I'm, I, I'm, I'm Everything serious. Everything he's doing on his own, he's doing. At every level, on every floor, this White House is energized, there's sunshine beaming throughout the place and on almost every face. It's winner and winning center. And our White House, our president, is at the top of his game. It is a shame that this country, which has, uh, is benefiting so much from this president's leadership, and does not understand their obligations to the leader. Have a great weekend. The president makes such a thing possible for us all. Man, not only did his show get canceled, it got canceled after four years of this man showing that he has no dignity. No dignity, no self respect. Lou Dobbs, man who lacks self respect, man, that is an embarrassing montage, I will say. Yeah, so uh, first of all, he said, um, We have an obligation to the president to compliment him. Mm, I'm pretty sure that's not true. I think you think you have an obligation because it's in your DNA. I mean, that dude's a natural born bootlicker. The only thing Lou Dobbs was doing his whole life was searching for the right boot. Um, so he, he, well, he found a second boot now, the one to the back of his ass from Fox, because he's gone. Um, but I'll tell you, uh, when he, I don't know what was more over the top, him saying that Trump was close to perfect, him saying that Trump outworks anyone or oh outthinks God. anyone, let alone everyone. I mean, you really have to be, that's why I say Lou Dobbs is deranged. I think he genuinely believes things that no rational human being could come close to believing. And then he ended it with, we're gonna have a weekend thanks to the president. <laughs> Wait, what? <laughs> Not the, we have weekends because of Trump? He invented a hot tub time machine that apparently he and Lou Dobbs got into, which was apparently the best moment of Lou Dobbs' life. They went back oh. to invent weekends. You wanna know who actually invented the weekend? Unions.